welcome to the 1994 British Touring Car Championship. Right then, hello and welcome back to GTR2 and round 3 of the 1994 British Touring Car Championship and race 2 of the weekend here at Brands Hatch Indy. After our amazing 5th place performance yesterday, I'm hoping to capitalise on that and have another top 5 finish for race number 2. Um, but for that, we're going to get down onto the grid and join Josh of the Moaning Yorkshireman once again for the grid walk for round 3 of the series. The second race of the weekend here at Brands Hatch is about to begin, so let's take a look and see how the drivers line up. Gabriele Tarquini takes yet another pole position, and alongside him is Joachim Winklock in the Schnitzer BMW. Steve Soper lines up third, and Jean Piero Simone in fourth. Dan Bartlett in the Volvo 850 is in fifth, and John Cleland in the Vauxhall Cavalier is in sixth. Jeff Allen begins row four, and alongside him is Matt Neal in the Mazda Exidos. Row five is made up of Alan Menu and Paul Radisidge in the Ford Mondeo. The first of the Peugeots is next with Patrick Watts in the 405, starting row six. Alongside him is Keith O'Dor in the Nissan Primera. Julian Bailey in the Toyota Carina E is in row seven. Alongside him is James Kay, also in a Toyota Carina, but an independent. Row 8 is made up of Andy Rouse in the Ford Mondeo and Jan Lammers in the Volvo 850. An all-independent Row 9, Nigel Smith in his Vauxhall Cavalier. Alongside him is James Thompson in the Peugeot 405. Row 10 is made up of Will Hoy in the Toyota Carina and Jeff Steele in his independent BMW. It's all alone for Tim Sugden on Row 11 as Tim Harvey is unable to start due to issues with the car. And on Row 12 it is Chris Goodwin and David Leslie. Bringing up the rear of the grid is Ricard Rydell in the Volvo 850. He's all alone as Nigel Albon is unable to start due to car troubles. Now it's time to hand you back over to Dan for the commentary and the start of the race. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Josh, for the grid walk once again. So as you can see, everyone is starting in the same positions that we finished yesterday. Uh, a couple of cars did retire yesterday as well, and a few will not be starting race number two. So, um, yeah, there's going to be a couple of gaps on the grid, but I've made sure that... Uh, any of the cars that didn't start in 1994 uh, won't start this series either. Same as I did for 1993. So, uh, yeah, we're hoping to capitalise on another top five finish that we had yesterday. Um, the AI, once again, they're a bit slow around Brands Hatch. The tighter circuits, they don't seem to go very well. Um, but I think the uh, the next round of the championship, we're going to Snetterton. So it's going to be a different story entirely. So you can see we're coming to the end of the grid. And I will get all my settings up and running. And here we go then, the sun is slowly setting. And round three is underway. Oh, a little bit of a bog down start. Cleland gets the jump. And it looked like Tarquini just whacked the wall there as well, the, uh, the exit to pit wall. Oh. So I've lost a few spots. Go through Druids for the first time. My tyres were going off a hell of a lot yesterday at the end of the race. So they probably will do the same here. Oh, and there's a bit of bumping and boring going on as well. Head through clearways. Oh, and that is Simone going wide. Now up into sixth place. Winklehawk leads away from Tarquini and Steve Soper in the top three after one lap. And Simone gets past very easily. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get the jump on the Alphas. No, they are way too quick. Compared to my heavy brick. Simone should probably take the positions away from Matt Neal.
And starting lap three. Tarquini's got past Winklehawk again, so he probably will pull away. Simone, though, has the fastest lap time. Where are my teammates? Jan Lammers is in 22nd, Rickard Rydell 21st, so... Rydell did retire on the last lap yesterday. But the team were able to get the car fixed, it was just a small issue. Uh, it was a brake failure on Nigel Albon's car, they couldn't get the car fixed. And so he didn't start this race, and Tim Harvey as well, who also went into the pits with engine difficulties has not started either so 26 cars started yesterday only 24 start the race today so not a good time had by the Renault 19 team or the uh, Renault Laguna team the Renault's not having a good time of it at all last of the runners at the moment is Jeff Steele in the uh, privateers class James Thompson also not getting to grips around Brands Hatch either. He is way down in 23rd. Or Simone elbowing out Matt Neal. And they both had a little bit of a coming together. And that's pushed me back into 5th place. And back through Druids we go. And Jan Lammers has got past Rickard Rydell for 21st place. Oh, and there goes the bumper of the BMW. John Clellan gives uh, Steve Soper a little bit of a whack at the rear. And i done the same to John Cleland. And there goes Matt Neal. Paul Radisic has managed to get past Simone for 7th place. There's a nice little battle going on between Soper and Cleland as well. And just look how quick they uh, pull away on the straights. Understeering a lot. Radisic trying to get the move on the inside gives me a little nudge. My car isn't at all behaving as well as it was for race one yesterday. Fighting a lot more with the handling. Here comes Simone. Yeah, my car is, seems to be really more down on power today than it was yesterday. As you can see, it's really not liking picking up any speed.
But so far, all runners and riders are still circulating around the track. And I've gone off. Keith O'Dor trying to come up behind in the Nissan Primera. Either my car is down on power or my team didn't change tires for race two. Oh, and there's a uh, Simone and Radisic. Coincidentally, it was Simone and Radisic I kept getting together in 94. They kept crashing into each other. Radisic was not very pleased. Yeah, look at that going up towards Druids, the car just sort of like dies. It has not a lot of power to it at all, no grunt. And I've not changed anything to the car at all from race one. Oh, Simone's gone wide. Back up into 7th place. Starting lap 11, 20 laps to go. Radisic, what are you doing? What was it someone said during round one? They used to call him Paul Horseradish. Which is quite fitting. Very similar sounding names. And amazingly, Jeff Steele has managed to get past Rickard Rydell and James Thompson. Thompson doesn't seem to be having a good time of it today. Down in last place, Rickard Rydell also not doing very well in 23rd. Jan Lammers has moved up to 20th. So it looks like I'm carrying the Volvo team on my shoulders for this championship. My car is really struggling on pace. The rest of the front pack are pulling away. You can hear the engine is, is just not firing very well. Here comes Simone. Okay, Simone's got past Radisic. And we are still clean so far. Uh, 29 seconds of deficit from James Thompson at the back as well. And uh, Tarquini and Soper have a 10 second lead. As I'm going to go off. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. I don't think the team changed tires. Or something, I don't know. The car just doesn't feel right. It doesn't have the same 
grunt that it did yesterday. That could just be because it's later on in the afternoon, the uh, track temperature is probably a bit lower. Who knows? Right, Steve Soper has the fastest lap at the moment. Tarquini still leads the way though, not by much. This is a nice tight little tussle between me, Radisic, and Simone. Uh, now watch as they pull away. Oops. i got to remember that my brakes aren't as good as the other drivers because of the heavy weight of the car. So I have to break that much earlier for corners. I'm liking this though, the AI seem to be a lot faster today than they were yesterday. I'm actually having to work for, uh, well, lesser positions as I just dive up the inside of both of them. No, you don't. Okay, that's what happens when you put one wheel on the grass. I've stored the engine. Okay, that was uh, very dodgy. Alrighty. I don't think we got that much in the way of damage. I think we're still good. I think it's just purely cosmetic body damage. I think we're okay. Yeah, we're good. That was just me. I went a little bit wide, put one wheel on the grass, and around the car went, which is usually what happens. So we got all that work to do again, but that's absolutely fine. I like a challenge. Julian Bailey getting past Andy Rouse. The back marker is definitely not as fast as uh, the front end with Simone that I was uh, battling with. So I can pass these cars a lot easier. I'm lucky that they keep going off on that section. And Patrick Watts, we meet again. Soon to be coming up to two thirds distance. Late on the brakes, get past Watts. Next is Jeff Allen in the Vauxhall. Will Hoy also in the third Toyota Carina. And a bit of debris on the track as well there. Don't know who that was from. 
Oh, I think it was from Will Hoy. His bumper is missing. Oh, Alan, why are you going so slow? Get out of the way. They've all gone wide. Back into the top 10, a single point. There's Keith Odor. And we have now reached two thirds distance. 10 laps to go. The last race of the afternoon here at Brands Hatch. As the sun slowly sets. So I think if I really try and push without making any mistakes, the highest I'm going to get is probably 7th, because Paul Radisic is only 4 seconds or just under 5 seconds ahead. Uh, the rest are 18 seconds up the road, so I'm not going to catch them unless something drastic happens. Steve Soper, speaking of something drastic, has got past Tarquini for the lead. And currently has the fastest lap time. I think Tarquini suffered a little bit of damage after clouting the pit wall at the start of the race. Quite lucky actually he didn't rip the front end off his car. So it seems like a little bit of damage to probably the front splitter is causing him aggro. Followed his line. Oh, there we go. Right, so back up into seventh. Not exactly a top five as I wanted, but it is still... Considering the, the equipment that we have, the Volvo and how heavy it is and everything, I don't think we're doing too bad so far. Mind you, saying that the next round is coming from Snetterton, which is a pretty damn quick circuit, the long straights. I think we're going to struggle there like we uh, 
did kind of at Thruxton. But we'll see. Tires are really screeching. That 26, five to go. Again, this race went through very quickly. Grandstands are slowly emptying now as well. You can see there's not a lot of people on the side of the circuit. Right, from the looks of it, there's no one in the grandstands at all. There's no one on the side of the track either. So they've all gone home already. Charmed. No, the track is truly deserted. Look at that. No one at all. Oh, there's a couple of people there, I think. So I'm looking at the side of the track and not really where I'm going. That's why I was so close to the pit wall there. Fascinated by the lack of uh, spectators, but there you go. We managed to catch up to Matt Neal and Simone, kind of. I think uh, Matt Neal has got caught out on the back markers though, which were coming up to lap. One of them being my teammate. No, don't do it again. Don't do it again. Get off the grass. There we go. Uh, so last of the runners then, Rickard Rydell, Chris Goodwin. Steve Soper still leads Gabrielli Tarquini by just under four seconds or three seconds. So much understeer, look at that. Ooh. Matt Neal's got past my teammate. My teammate goes wide. Teammate let me pass though, which is cool. And get past Chris Goodwin. Lap 29, two to go. Ah, uh, my brakes are going as well. Very spongy. Got my foot flat to the floor on the brake. Now you can hear him screaming. So my tires are going, my brakes have gone. Matt Neal has decided to go wide, so I could possibly, possibly get 6th place. Which I will through clearways, if my car will actually stop. Gian Piero Simone up ahead as well. I don't think we've got enough time to catch him. He's going to get past the back marker, I think. Yeah, because we're starting at the last lap. So, a nice recovery though, I mean if we keep this position, no mistakes, then we are going to be up into 6th place, and Matt Neal has decided to go into the pits. Oh, Simone went wide. Has he got a problem? Oh.
and we do get fifth place. Lovely. Okay, I'm happy with that. Race finish. And there we go. Race to the weekend. Two top five finishes. I will take that. Uh, Andy Rice retired at the end as well. Seems to be an issue where the last lap some cars go into the pits. Um, but yeah, all in all, not too bad. So Jeff Allen in the end finishes last, which is a bit of a strange one. Um, so yeah, okay. So not a bad weekend all in all. We got two top five finishes. Uh, we were the highest place Volvos once again for rounds two and three. Uh, my teammates of Rickard Rydell and Jan Lammers finished 22nd and 16th respectively. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Josh of the Morning Yorkshireman for the race results on the Works and Privateers teams and the total points after three rounds of the 1994 British Touring Car Championship. So let's take a look at the race results here. The second race of the weekend at Brands Hatch Indy. And it was Steve Soper taking the win in the BMW 3 Series. Ahead of Gabriele Tarquini in the Alpha 155. Joachim Winkelock rounding out the podium. And rounding up a great weekend for the Schnitzer BMW team. John Cleland is in fourth in the Vauxhall Cavalier. And another solid fifth place finish for Dan Bartler in the Volvo 850. Rounding out the top six is Gian Piero Simone in the Alpha 155. Let's take a look at the total cup for privateers now and it was James Kay taking the victory in his Toyota Carina E ahead of Jeff Steele in a solid P2 in the BMW 3 Series. Nigel Smith in his Vauxhall Cavalier rounds out the podium and James Thompson finished fourth in his Peugeot 405. The last of the finishers in the privateer cup was Chris Goodwin in his Vauxhall Cavalier and of course no Nigel Albon this race due to car troubles. So let's take a look and see what that's done to the championship standings over the course of this weekend. And it is Gabriele Tarquini that is leading the way on 60 points in his Alfa Romeo 155. Joaquin Winklock up next, 6 points further behind him. And Steve Soper on 46 points is in third. Gian Piero Simone in the other Alfa Romeo 155 already looking like a distant 4th place with 28 points. John Cleland in his Vauxhall Cavalier is 5th on 20 points. And Dan Bartlett rounding out the top six in his Volvo 850 with 17. And last but by no means least, let's take a look at the total cup for privateer standings. And it is James Kay and Nigel Smith tied on 48 points currently in their Toyota Carina E and Vauxhall Cavaliers respectively. James Thompson only a slim two points behind him in the Peugeot 405. And Jeff Steele's podium this race means that he's only a further six points back from James Thompson and only eight points off the overall lead. Chris Goodwin, a distant fifth with 16 points, and Ian Khan, despite not racing this round, is still in sixth position with 10 points. All that remains for me to do is thank you all for watching and to hand you back over to Dan for the conclusion of the round. So another race weekend has come to a close. Many thanks to Josh of the Moaning Yorkshireman for providing the voiceovers for the Gridwalks race results and point standings this weekend. And we will see you in two weeks time for round four coming from Snetterton over the Maybank holiday weekend. So thank you very much for watching as always. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.